Hi, my name is Taylor Pride Barefoot, and I'm one of the pastors at Myers Park United Methodist Church. And during Lent, we have had the opportunity to host a gallery called Beauty from Brokenness by Art Charlotte. Uh, this is a community of local artists who have responded to the question is, what is beautiful out of our brokenness? And we've been lucky enough to host this on our second floor lobby just outside of Jubilee Hall. So I'm standing here in our gallery and we know that y'all are at home. So we wanted to give y'all an opportunity to have a virtual tour of the gallery. So I'll be going around explaining the pieces, reading the captions, and we're grateful that you get to join us and experience the beauty in this season with us. So our gallery not only includes two-dimensional art pieces, but three-dimensional art pieces. Sculptor and artist Kelly Stahl has given us um, this piece that she's created. She works with found and lost objects, and she found this statue of Jesus. And you can, you can see that, this is a, um, that she's actually broken Jesus and placed into communion chalices. And this piece is entitled Bread. And it's just a reminder that we are part of the broken body of Christ together. So here we have a piece entitled The Tree of Life by Sabrina Frey. Um, this is made entirely out of beads. Um, it has incredible detail. And I'm just gonna read the caption for you. Every year we go through a type of life and death. And with every season, there are changes that represent our daily lives. Every season has its own beauty, its own start and end. The tree is a classic symbol of this yearly renewal. Hi, here we have a piece by Liz Gore called Celebrating Learning Differences. Uh, Liz shares that she was diagnosed with the learning differences when she was a child. She had a difficult time in school and this affected her self-image. Knowing who she was in Christ, therapy and love from friends and family have helped her to find healing and new perspective. Here we have a piece called The Rising Sun by Meg Malassi. And this is a really cool piece. It's um, a decayed Polaroid print. Meg shares the very essence of the Polaroid decay essence is to create something new out of something broken. I discovered this process during a period of depression over what I perceived as a loss of direction in my photography. I took mistake or unable Polaroid prints, submerged them in water and waited. Over a period of weeks and sometimes months, the chemicals in the print broke down. This allowed for new colors, new shapes, and new composites to emerge. When I pulled out this print, I was struck by how much it reminded me of a mountain scene at sunrise, full of hope, promise, and a new beginning. It also reminded me that out of brokenness, new ways of seeing can evolve. And below it, we have a piece called Fire Pit by Robert Guy. This plant depicts how the world can seem harsh and void of any nurturing value, and yet God can still fill the void and create something beautiful within its own environment, a miracle. And over here, this larger piece is by Brandon Henry. Within the cycle of creation and destruction lies the basis for divinity. Nature's regenerative con continuum remains mysterious and unfathomable to human understanding. Scientific inquiry may define and describe the process and forces at work, but science cannot demystify the ultimate origin or intention of the cosmos because no empirical data is, un is obtainable. Men have attempted to cast the supernatural in relation to their own limited experience, even to impose their features and attitudes on divine figures. The true profundity of the, of the supernal lies in its total inscrutability, its utter removal from ordinary experience or knowledge, its unfathomable, implacable, and unstoppable. We tremble before it and we are powerless against it. And up here, we have a, a piece called The Memories of Galveston by Chris Kaft. Um, Chris shares that Hurricane Harvey hit the Gulf Coast in 2007 and devastated the whole area with massive flooding. Having grown up in Houston and having most of my family still living there, I was in a state of remembering Galveston that I frequented as a teenager. Today, two years later, the city has totally recovered and one could not tell that this had happened. And below this, we have one called Det Detour by Molly. Uh, part, Partkia Detour is about finding one's way. There are so many roads to travel to get to your destination. 
Some places are stopovers, others are resting places or places to thrive and grow, and some are simply detours with an empty nest and a crumpled marriage of 20 years. I find my journey has hit a crossroad and art helps navigate my way. So here we have a piece called The Word of the Cross by Alison Spencer. I actually had the privilege of hearing her talk about this piece. And I'm going to share the, uh, the caption she wrote. In this world, we all experience brokenness at times in our lives. It is our choice what we do with that brokenness. We can choose to hold on to it and let it shape and control our lives, or we can choose to give it over to Christ and allow Christ to heal and forgive and create something new and beautiful. In this painting, I am focusing on our choice to relinquish those things that hold us down and hold us back from experiencing all the beauty and goodness that God desires for us. As we deposit, relinquish, let go of our baggage at the foot of the cross, our tears fall and are replaced or transformed into the blood of Christ. Christ takes our sin, although he knew no sin himself, so that we might become righteous and whole. Our tears and his blood water and nourish the ground and bring forth new and beautiful life as shown with the fresh green grass and spring flowers. And Allison shares um, some of the symbols in her painting. Um, obviously the cross and the papers nailed to the tree she shares are um, varied as each individual's experiences. We each have our own sins, regrets, hurts, sorrows, and they're all given to the one who heals. She also includes luggage to show that we bring our past to the cross as well. And as she shares the message of hope, all of these things feed into these flowers which grow out of our pain. So this piece is called Winter by Shannon Conley. And she shares, holidays are a time of joy and nostalgia. For many people, they are also a time of grieving. For those who are no longer with us, the times are long past. The little girl looks out over the ice in a classic holiday scene. But look closer, there is a shadow figure amongst the people representing someone who is no longer there. Perhaps the family was broken up by divorce or a death. In any case, even with a missing piece, the beauty of the season remains. So this piece is entitled Easter by artist Foster Bullock. And this piece is about brokenness as it reflects the cross. I abstracted the cross and the theme of its title Easter by painting an initial layer of red to represent blood and brokenness. The covering layer of white is about washing over brokenness through the cross. This is a piece I really wish y'all could see in person because you can see the layers and you can see the red sticking through, but above all, you can see this cross. But it's a piece that um, the texture really plays into the experience of the piece. So maybe we can come back and see it at the end. One of the beautiful things about this project is it's not just local artists, but we have many artists in our own congregation. When this gallery came up, I was contacted by Robert Lutz and he said, I have a piece I want to be included in this gallery. And so we have a piece of photography by Robert from Ephesus, Turkey, um, in, in his own understanding of beauty that comes from brokenness. So this is a piece I'm really excited about. Um, once again, this was this is a piece that came from within our church. Uh, this is made by a sophomore in high school, Emma Nicholson. And I'm just gonna read the caption she shares with these pieces. Even when you make a mistake that seemingly messes everything up, the outcome can turn out better than, e than even your original idea. Even what may seem dark or depressing can bring beauty and happiness. Even in the darkest of colors, the darkest of times, there is light to be found upon the horizon. This piece is called Stone Mountain Overlook by artist Tiffany Clark. I'll sh this is her caption. A single tree breaking through a rocky expanse caught my ear eye near the top of Stone Mountain, North Carolina. Something about a single object standing alone captures the imagination with its simple aesthetic. The seed that dares to break through the inhospitable stone and claim the place on the edge of the cliff within view but set apart from the surrounding forest has a special beauty of singularity. This image of breakthrough beauty reminds me of hope and growth through challenge. Through this vantage point a one's lonely outlook is a place where light shines unhindered. This image began as a photograph, then was printed on paper and transferred to a board degrading slightly in the process. Highlights were painted in, restoring the distressed photo with painted vibrancy. 
The result is a fusion of photograph and painting, bringing elements of both to life. The completed painted photo transfer was mounted on a rustic slice of wood to contrast and complement the stone foreground and forested background of the image. This piece is completed by Lee Williams called No Less Mine. No Less Ma Mine was painted after reading a poem written by my daughter-in-law about the adoption of her granddaughter. Lee chose the style of painting of overlaying patterns on top of realistic rendering to represent the complexity of the child's surroundings and life situations. The joyful child is unaware of the details surrounding her birth. She is present in the moment in the adoptive parent's presence and outstretched hands bring delight to her face. The child is yet unaware of her birth mother who is represented by a shadow on the door. Both women are important in the child's life. Out of the brokenness of one woman's life circumstances came the birth of a child to be nurtured and loved in a new family. This is true beauty from brokenness. This piece is entitled Lonely Places by Kimberly McGuire. This is a collaboration born out of a lifelong friendship between Alexandria Huff and Kimberly McGuire, friends who grew up together and now live apart. Alexandria originally created a geometric, geometrically complex dreamscape collage, and Kimberly, inspired by the theme of beauty from brokenness, drew a coastal landscape over top with oil pastels. A macro version of broken beauty, the eroded coastline, on top of a micro version, fragmented paper clippings, the metaphor of the lone rock formation, a part of the larger body of land, but also apart from it, not only provoked the piece's name, it also represents their enduring kinship. This piece is called Hopeful by Eva Crawford. This once considered physically and intellectually broken child continues to have special needs, but she has surpassed all expectations of her limitations. She is a daughter and a big sister capable of loving because she has been loved. Her need caused my friend to respond, which prompted the man who loved her to propose. They were married as this young girl was adopted. They are now a beautiful family of five. Beauty from brokenness. This piece is entitled With Syria by photographer Nancy Elbert. She writes, an abandoned house on an old crossroad in April is garlanded with delicate and brightly colored with Syria flowers, hope and beauty, nature reclaiming a ruin. This piece is entitled Imperfect Flow by Carmela Yarvey. My art is all about water, beauty, and connection, but in an abstract way. My first love is painting, even my water glass I approach from a painting perspective. Like a lot of artists, I strive to create beautiful things, yet I struggle with inherent imperfections or brokenness that is within me and part of everything I make. The first half of my life, I was arrogant, confident in my own abilities and knowledge. Finally, God got my attention. Over the past 15 years since giving my life to Christ, I've learned I am really fallen, a sinner, and yet have been redeemed by Christ. This painting collage is imperfect and captures my passions for painting, collage, circles, and water. Where I've taken favorite areas of hand-painted beauty, cut them, torn them, and juxtaposed with other seemingly odd paces to create something completely new. This piece is called Ordinary Glory by Hilary Seiber. Let me read the caption. This work is a portrait of my sister. As a mother of five, her life is busy and spinning. Frantic energy in her, is her norm, but there is a steady rock that she leans to for her strength. Her weakness is God's glory. This one is called Against All Odds by Penny Oliver. Consider the daisy in my painting, Against All Odds. Its seed may fall on a broken rocky ledge with little soil for nourishment or support. Undefeated by the broken environment, the determined little daisy will accept with gratitude a glimpse of the sun and the blessing of a few drops of rain. It will hold its head high and in honor of the sun, it will bloom and it will add beauty against all odds. This piece is called Broken Lines by Janine Medlin. Sometimes things get disconnected, but sometimes it's okay for it to be that way. This piece is entitled Invitation by artist Tamari Stafford. When our souls are wounded, it can feel hopeless and dark with no way out. That was true until the Lord sent his beautiful gift of light as an invitation to freedom from a hopeless situation. There's an invitation and it is a decision. 
This is called the Dawn of Hope after Aniki. Hurricane Aniki hit Hawaii as a Category 4 store storm on September 11, 1992. It was the most powerful storm to hit Hawaii in record, recorded history. It killed, injured, and caused billions of dollars of damage. It has forever changed the people who survived it, the landscape, and the population of feral chickens. Although Hawaii's official state bird is the Hawaiian goose, wild roosters have become the unofficial bird of the island. Granted, not everything about the population explosion is beautiful, but as roosters announce a new day, they are a symbol of survival and rebuilding, of the dawning of a new day and a new island character. The background of my painting is from a satellite photograph of the island as it hit in Hawaii. The yellow was added to the location as the sun rises at dawn in the location where I took the photograph of this rooster. This piece is entitled Raw by Molly English. Her caption is, we all have pain in our lives, but we often hide it from ourselves and others. This portrait has an elusive but palpable expression. I hope the viewer will reflect, in, reflect inwardly as they share his gaze, find intimacy, and see the beauty and vulnerability. This piece is called The Beautiful Beginnings by artist Rosa Renteria. My people will live in a peaceful dwelling places, in secure homes, in undisturbed places of rest. Isaiah 32, 18. This building made out of stone and it is a small kitchen that belongs to my grandparents, Papillion and Manola, this kitchen was not always used in that way. It was the family dwelling of eight. As the years went by, it was reshaped. My Papillion built their home many times with its strong hands, a courageous heart, and a persistent soul. My Mamiola maintained her home with her hidden charm, her graceful heart, and patient soul. A home built out of broken rocks and other materials that my grandpa could find. Many painful memories were crafted there, but nothing compared to the long talks at the dinner table or the laughter that echoed through the halls. My grandfather passed away in October. I painted this beautiful kitchen this summer without any clue what was coming. Beautiful beginnings are something we all have, but I look forward to those long talks at God's dinner table. The best is yet to come. This piece is called Navigating to Wholeness by Rafaela Emilia Gomez. The caption is as follows. I have come to a place in my life now where I have balance, peace. I have been healed from mental and physical abuse. Now I can say that I am whole and complete. God, family, and friends stood by my side and didn't give up on me. I walk out of the darkness and in the path that is filled with light, direction, and purpose, and much joy. My painting reflects me and where I am now. And this is a really interesting piece to see in person because once again, it has layers of texture and different pieces and um, communicates such a complex image of wholeness and beauty coming from brokenness. Thank you all for joining me on this virtual tour. I'm so glad that we can stay connected and see beauty in this time together. If you have any questions or you want to reach out to one of the artists, please contact me. My email is tbarefoot at mpumc.org. And I would be happy to connect you with the artist or to um, send you any of the images if you want to see them closer up. Thank you so much.